Greetings from sunny Las Vegas. In 2018, I purchased the Fabarm Axis RS12 Trap Combo. The day that it came in, I took it straight to the practice range for its first run. Now, since it was the maiden run, I decided to video that for posterity. Now, here it is all these years later, and I've come across that video and decided to put it onto YouTube. Now, for the reason that we're really here, I had a subscriber that left a comment asking me to do a review of the shotgun now that I've owned it all this time. So, without further delay, here is my review of the Fabarm Axis RS12 Trap Combo from an owner's perspective. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Now, let me start off by explaining a little bit about myself. I'm a competitive shooter in the sport of trap shooting who travels and competes as a pastime hobby. I'm a registered member of the Amateur Trap Shooters Association, which is a national organization that regulates the sport of trap shooting worldwide. Now, my journey started in 1991 when I shot my very first round of trap and I was hooked instantly. I joined my first trap club in 2003 and that is when I started shooting competitively. Now, I purchased my fab arm in April of 2018, and I've shot a total of 58,000 rounds through it over these past five years. Now, I actually keep a journal of my shooting activities, so I know that this number is accurate. To know the shotgun is to know the company. Fab arm is an Italian gun company dating back to 1900. Its home headquarters is in Brescia, Italy. Fab arm USA is located in Cambridge, Maryland. It's important to know that Fabarm no longer sells the Axis RS-12. They've replaced it with a model they call Elos. From what I can tell reading about it on their website, it is a crossover shotgun intended to be suitable for all clay shooting sports. The Elos retails for about $5,400. If you should look at an Axis RS-12 when it's sitting in a gun rack next to a Caesar Guarini, which is another Italian brand, you'd think there was a resemblance. As it turns out, you're not crazy. You're correct. In 2011, Fabarm merged with Seizure Guarini and forged a new partnership. A new shareholding agreement meant the two companies could share various production synergies that the two brands had developed together in the decade that preceded it. So to say that there is a similarity between the two guns is an understatement. A buddy of mine shoots a Seizure Guarini Invictus 5. Now, I snapped this picture of them sitting side by side at one of our tournaments. And with the miraculous power of television, I'm going to rotate the photo horizontally for a much easier visual examination. Do take note of how similar they are in both design and appearance. Look at the trigger area. You'll notice that the Invictus has much more pronounced and premium engraving. Now, I liken this as being the same as owning a Chevy Tahoe instead of a Cadillac Escalade. It's the same basic vehicle, but it's the nicer and pricier trim of the Cadillac that sets them apart. Your RS-12 comes contained in a hard plastic travel case, which is a good thing. Mine has a lot of scars from traveling. If you're near my age, you remember a commercial where gorillas tossed luggage around at airports once it was out of your sight. Has to be true. Hinges are strong. I've had no issues. The case is compliant with all airline locking requirements, so there's no challenges in this area. All along the front, you have four fasteners, two of which are able to be locked. And inside the handle, you'll also find locking hubs for conveniently placing your padlocks. When you open the gun case, you get the full view of the shotgun in its travel configuration. And the first thing your eyes notice are the yellow fab arm logos on the barrel and stock sleeves. And these came with the gun. With the sleeves removed, we can now take visual inventory of everything inside. Reaching up and pulling back the upper lid compartment exposes the over under barrel used for doubles events. My gun came with five chokes, skeet, improved cylinder, modified, improved modified, and full. I bought two more modifieds because I wanted a modified for the singles barrel and both barrels of the over-under. I needed three, they gave me one. You also have a set of Allen wrenches that fits all of your adjusting screws, such as the ones on your adjustable comb. Next, you have your choke wrench. Its teeth fit snugly into the slots on the choke tubes and it does work effectively. 
The inside of the case is lined with thin molded plastic, and over time it is cracked and broken in some places. The locations of the brakes are in the bottoms and ends of the recessed compartments, and I'm guessing that since the gun components are heavy and sharp, that they've caused this damage when being jostled around inside during transit. I've never experienced any damage to my gun or accessories, but in contrast, the interior of the Caesar case is sturdier and cloth lined. If this is where they reduce things to have it half the price of a Caesar Guarini, it's an acceptable trade-off in my opinion. The gun stock I have is what they call their tri-wood pattern. It's not actual wood grain you're seeing. It's printed on there with ink. And after 58,000 rounds, there's no signs of wearing off, so it is durable. I chose the tri-wood because the actual wood grain version they were offering was very plain, and this pattern looked much nicer. I've been very satisfied with the looks, and once again, if this is how they're keeping their costs down, bargaining with the aesthetics without compromising the performance is an acceptable trade-off to me every single time. This gun pad isn't the one that originally came with my gun. I ordered this one from FabArm after the fact to shorten its length of pull. It originally came with a thicker 22 millimeter version of the pad. Before this gun, I shot doubles with the Browning Synergy and it had a shorter length of pull. So I replaced the thicker pad with FabArm's 12 millimeter version so that this one matched the Synergy. The thinner pad is a bit harder into the shoulder, but not by much. The adjustable comb system in this gun is actually really sturdy. I've always found it to be solid. Every experience I've had when the comb loosened up, it was always the fault of the operator and never the gun design. The two posts are very sturdy and offer the ability of up, down, and left, right adjustments. To adjust it left and right, you use your Allen wrench to loosen the screws in the top of the posts. The posts will then slide left and right along the measured tick marks, which I also find very helpful to have. Tighten them at the spot you want and you're done. To move the comb up and down, you simply rotate the black lug up and down the threaded post as desired. Clockwise lowers it, counterclockwise raises it. Once you have it at the desired elevation, rotate the silver keeper until it snugs up against the bottom of the lug and it holds it in place. The same applies to the keeper. Up is counterclockwise, or as we used to say back home, lefty loosey. I'm a big dude. I'm six foot four, so I have large hands and things. An upgrade I liked when switching from the Browning to my fab arm was the palm swell. It fits better in the palm of my hand. I find the overall stock grip of the axis to be very comfortable. The trigger on this gun is adjustable, but it can only slide backward and forward inside the trigger well. This gun is not equipped with a trigger mechanism that can be removed from the receiver. To gain access to the trigger and firing pins, you must take the receiver apart. In 2020, I did have a problem where both barrels of my over-under would fire with a single trigger pull. Now I sent that into FabArm and they addressed it. It ended up being a loose part inside my trigger mechanism. Now they replaced it and he told me that I would never have that problem again and so far I haven't. But during that conversation he told me that the firing pin is guaranteed for the life of my gun. It's not supposed to break. If it ever does, that I'm supposed to send that into FabArm, they'll replace that and send it right back to me absolutely free. Same thing with the ejector springs. It's guaranteed for the life of the gun. It's not supposed to break. If it does, send it to them and they'll send it right back. I wear gloves when I shoot, and this area in front of the trigger is where I grasp the shotgun when carrying it around the range with the action open. As you can see, I've worn off the bluing. The gun has a four-way safety and barrel selector switch. Left and right movements determine which over-under barrel you're choosing to fire first. One dot fires the lower barrel first, two dots the upper barrel. Forward and backward motions switches the safety on and off. The safety does not automatically engage after breaking the action open, like other brands do. My RS-12 came equipped 
with a six and a half ounce kinetic recoil reducer. It's anchored inside the stock assembly and to find it, just remove the butt pad, loosen it with a long flathead screwdriver and it slides right out. It also helps with the balance. I've always found that this gun has a very nice balance. I've shot others that had a heavy muzzle end, but not this one. And as you can see, it balances perfectly at the center hinge. And I want to point out, this is a video shot, not a photo, as evidenced by the towel that you can see moving with the breeze. This gun is called a combo, which means it comes with two barrels that you can interchange on the same stock. Now this barrel is the 34 inch unsingle. The term unsingle means that the single barrel configuration is occupying the same space as the lower barrel would have if it was an over under barrel. I'm very fond of the unsingle high rib configuration and the ability to change barrels. I have never had any issues with the forearm whatsoever. Nothing has ever loosened or malfunctioned. I like shooting high patterns, so one of my favorite features is the ability to raise and lower my point of impact by adjusting the front bead. Speaking of the bead, during my first competition, it came loose and would turn cockeyed on me when shooting. Cellophane tape fixed me until I got home, but blue Loctite was the permanent solution. This is a view of the over-under barrel, just like you saw with the unsingle. There's not much I can think of to mention that's different from the unsingle except the obvious two barrels. Pretty much the only thing I find important to highlight here is that the over-under also has the front bead adjustment that operates the same as the unsingle. And when you change it, it adjusts the point of impact of both barrels at the same time. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the first time that I've ever done any type of product review. So it was quite the learning experience for me. I mean, for example, I learned how often people in my neighborhood use a leaf blower. Oh, who knew? At any rate, I enjoyed putting the video together for you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I try to take it from the perspective that if you were coming to my house and you were going to look at this shotgun and ask me questions, what is it that you would want to know and what is it that you would want to see? And hopefully I've met that level of standard throughout the video. If there's anything else that you would like me to expand upon that I didn't cover very well, please leave those in the comments. If there's something else you would like to learn that I didn't include, leave those in the comments as well. Or if you have a suggestion for some other video that you would like me to do, I would consider that. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next time.